Oh, no problem. No, I appreciate you allowing me to come up on here. Oh, no, I've been trying to get you on YouTube forever. So, like, you know, it, it's it's funny you say that because I was thinking yesterday, I was like, man, and how hard is it really just to sit there with the camera in the garage? And like, I know. I look back like because I made a I made a bunch of videos of like me working and I'm like I looked up I've rewatched them and I'm like yeah. I feel like I have to send all my videos to somebody and tell them edit it because every time I watch myself talk I hate it. I rewatch. There we go. Sorry, I, I don't want a window open. But yeah, go on. Oh no, you're good. No, I just hate like what like I'll rewatch videos. I hate watching like hearing myself talk. It's oh yeah, dude. I never I never watch my own videos. It's horrible. It's horrible. Yeah. <laughs> So it's not just me that feels that way. No, definitely not. All right, but so we are live. Um, uh, and uh, so I guess we'll introduce ourselves. Uh, I'm Ken. If you haven't watched the channel before, I build really dumb shit in my garage. So go <laughs> check out all my old videos uh, and see what I've been up to. But the reason uh, we're here tonight is we're going to be talking uh, to this guy uh, here, uh, Jake, about um all the cool godzilla for godzilla stuff he does he can probably tell you more about it so i'll just let him introduce himself and give you some of his background about how he got into this stuff and he can take the show so all right well thank you very much ken for having me on here i appreciate it very much um so my name is jake heffron uh right now i'm kind of got a background job going right now working for willis performance enterprises um under Brian Wolf, and right now we really only work on Godzilla engines. So if you're not familiar with the Godzilla engine, it is the 7.3 uh, gas engine from Ford that is in the 2020 and up Super Duties. Um, again, conventional push rod engine, cam and block. You know, it's not a dual overhead cam engine. Um, not like not the Coyotes and modulars. Do what? It's not this wide, right? No, no, it's not this wide. It's this wide. And you know, right. what's funny is looking at it from a dimension standpoint. Um, so the Godzilla versus the LS, um, I had a 5.3 LS engine. Um, it was a true LS. It was aluminum block. There was only, I think, an inch and a quarter difference in, in block height or length, you would, you would say. So it's relatively, you know, the same length and width is even the same. It's, it's really not much difference at all. Um, the cylinder heads are a little tall, but um, you do have canned and splayed valves with the Godzilla. So you're, I mean, you're going to have it and you're going to have a taller valve anyways, but. Right, right. So it's, it's not super big. So anyways, so okay. I work. Not, not to cut you off. So no, you you're say, good. You say that your shop, how did you, how did your shop, you guys, how did you decide, hey, we're going to be exclusive into this platform? Like what, what got you guys into it? So Brian worked for Ford um, for um, Global Engine Engineering, and his job classification there was to oversee all engine um, development for uh, quite a few different engine um, platforms. And the newest one before he retired in 2017 was the Godzilla. Um, so originally, I, I can't remember exactly what it was going to be, but I think it was going to be smaller than a 7.3 liter. Um, and they decided to go bigger uh, for whatever reason. I can't remember exactly what the storyline was, but it differed from what the original plan was. And from there, when Brian retired from Ford in 2017, he said, I want to make a business that is specifically for the performance aspect base of this engine. So what he, he wanted to basically jumpstart the Godzilla performance aftermarket um, setup. So not only, not really that that Willis Performance was making the performance parts, but they kind of did the R&D. Okay, this company makes a product, we're gonna test it and see how right. well it works. Um, how does this combination work with this set of parts? So that was really his main drive was to get the Godzilla exposure um, to the aftermarket world like Cali's and, you know, a bunch of different companies. And by doing so, that really um, helped the Godzilla platform because now we look and, I mean, we have an astronomical amounts of um, more companies starting to dip their feet into the Godzilla right. world. So, so it was really, it was really kind of a passion project for him. Like he felt like. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 that's his pride and joy. I mean, he like he ran Ford Performance for quite a few years, 
And um, I think he didn't, I, and this is just my thought. I think he found a lot more joy out of this engine um, than some of the other ones that he was kind of, you know, uh, like the boss of, you know, I don't want to say controlling, but being a part of leading a team to create an engine. I think this one, not only being his last one, I think he knew that this platform was going to be his last, but I think that he took a lot of pride in it and saw the, the cool factor of being able to put a, you know, um, cam and block engine, push rod engine back into production instead of going and continuing with the, um, you know, cam and head design. So, right. So, um, how did you personally get involved with, with, with this? So, so I used to work at a local track, Milo Dragway. I worked there for about three years um, and I did tech for them. So they have wow. uh, Friday night heads up races um, once every Friday. And I would go out there and help tech all the cars for all the big classes. So you had like right. Outlaw 10.5, um, Outlaw 632, Drag Radio, LDR, a bunch of different classes. So Brian lives like, mm, like not even probably 15 minutes away from the track. So he's fairly close. Not only that, he's a drag racer at heart. And I mean, he has a lot of championships to even show for it um, from him racing. So he was out there uh, racing his car, I think, in 2017 before he sold his gold car. But uh, so I knew of him, um, but I didn't personally like, you know, one on one chat with him. And then he ended up getting a new car. And I think it was around 2018, 2019 is when I really actually got introduced to him. Right. And so me and him talked and he's like, you know, if. <clears throat> You know, if you ever need a job or you want a job, because I was working at the school, um, at the high school as a teacher. And he said, you know, if you ever want to come work for me, you know, if you have time or whatever, you know, I'd love to have you work for me. So I was like, okay, absolutely. So I think it was 20, I think it was 2020, 2021. It was after I bought my house. So it was 2021 is when I started working for him. Um I texted him, said, Hey, Brian, you know, if you're looking for work, you know, I'm available this summer. And uh, he said, absolutely. Um, so it was pretty cool because it was only me and him. Um, and it, right. his son helped work too. So it so was he, a small shop, but it was a combination of right place, right time. And mm -hmm. you, had the right you had the right background. Right? Yeah, exactly. And I worked at a, a race shop beforehand and I started sweeping the floors. And then I, I moved up to running the engine dyno. And then on top of that, then I started running all the machines, boring and honing, uh, cylinder head work, um, you know, pretty much everything to do with machine and engine. I kind of did. Um, I didn't do it a, a whole lot. You know, I was right. young. I was 18, 19 years old. Um, but I def I got my feet in the door, my feet wet doing that kind of stuff. I got my foot in the door to do it. So Brian kind of, you know, he's like, okay, well, this kid knows something. And I thought I knew something, but to be honest with you, like 150% honest, I thought I knew engines at that time. I was like, man, I know a lot, you know, I know everything about it. And then as soon as I started working for Brian, like he just completely schooled me. And it Next was like, it, he humbled me. It was like, I wasn't cocky about it, to be honest with you, but it was like, Oh my gosh. Like I thought I knew a lot. And then Brian was like laid everything out on the table within pretty much a year. And I still don't know everything and it'll, it'll probably be forever before I actually know everything. Right. But, you know, so it was pretty cool to be able to go from a guy who was a Matt, like I'm going to say master engineer, like he knows so much. And then for him to be able to lay everything out on a table in front of you and be right. like, this is why this does this. This is why airflow is affected by this. It's just like, man, like the possibilities are endless. It really just opened up a big door, you know, for you to be able to think about things that happen in an engine. So, so yeah, that's that's pretty cool, right? So so you got mm -hmm. a pretty big background in, in engines and machining. And yeah. of course you did some racing, right? Back in back in the day. Yeah. Right? Yep. Yep. I did some racing in high school and then I did some straight racing uh out of college. And then uh I haven't really done racing since I graduated. Um because my truck has been a part and I really haven't had, I mean, I've driven some right. cars well, on the we'll drag strip. Yeah. We'll yeah. Yeah. So, um, 
I guess let's talk a little bit about this platform, right? Because a lot of people don't know. Um, mm -hmm. it, it's from Ford, so they automatically assume it's, you know, some crazy dual overhead cam monstrosity. Yeah, naturally. Do you, know, yeah. do you know why Ford decided to do a push rod engine? Like they've been doing, you know, they've been doing the overhead cam stuff for a while. Uh, why, do, in your opinion, do you think they decided to do another push rod motor? That's a really good question. In my personal opinion, I think it was just different. You know, I think it was a simplicity for yeah. not only for uh, the people, the engineers, to go back to an old school style of a conventional engine. But on top of that, I think it kind of lowered production cost because you don't have to have so many camshafts. You don't have to have so many timing right. chains. You don't have to have a big ass cylinder head that, you know, takes X amount of volume of aluminum. You right. know, it, I think it kind of like lowered the cost of everything. One on engineering aspect, two on production cost, and three, I think on technician standpoint, you know, how, how long does it take you to, to, you know, do new cams on a coyote, you know, right. compared to a Godzilla that takes a push rod engine that only takes maybe two hours. So it was a reliability thing. It was a back to the basic thing, you know, because they do say things are more over engineered than they need to be these days. Yeah, um, yeah, absolutely. For those that don't know, break down what this engine is. Because a lot of people, like I said, still aren't really sure when they hear the name. They don't know what it is. So kind of right. give people a rundown of, of what this platform is. Okay. So this is a uh, 445 cubic inch uh, Ford pushrod V8. Um, it is in the... 2020 on up super duties f2 i think it's it's the f250s um it is has a 422 bore uh has a four inch stroke so mathematically bore squared times stroke times 0.7854 times the number of cylinders gives you 445 cubic inches right uh what was that comment that was just up there well i was going to save all of the questions till the okay. end okay we, we can shoot a couple in here. This is a good question. This, this is a, It kind of goes in hand with what you're talking about right now. Okay. What is the advantages of the engine over the tried and true Windsor? So I don't know if I would say what are the advantages. I mean, okay, if you look at it this way, stock standpoint, we have aluminum heads right here. Um, we have how Windsors were 351s, correct? Um, yeah. I think they were. So now we have a 445 cubic inch. So I think we're in this standpoint, I think we're comparing apples to oranges because I mean, well, just, I, I guess, I guess Windsor was 302 and 351, right? Was that the, was it? Lab? See, yeah. I, I'm still, I'm still learning all the old school. I, it's, it's crazy. I'm so like diehard Godzilla stuff right now. Like it's, right, I, yeah. I don't really know that stuff, but, um, but anyways, um, so back to like the Godzilla stuff, um, you have a hydraulic roller camshaft already in, uh, kind of like the LS setup. Um, yeah, you have roller lifters, aluminum heads, uh, forged steel crank. Deep skirted block. Deep that's skirted right. block, yep, six bolt mains. That's, that's um, a big one. Yes, yeah. And I think uh, for the power levels that these engines are seeing right now, I think it was a very, very good, um, not, the, not that Ford, Ford itself, I'm going to say, I don't think that they really thought that this engine was going to be a performance based engine. I thought they just thought it was going to be another, you know, like a 460. We don't, they didn't think 460s were going to be big power, you know, at, or big power blocks. So, um, yeah, 422 bore, four inch stroke. Oh, it's got a, a 453 bore spacing. So that's the one thing I wanted to kind of talk about kind of immediately is when you look at, um, Bore spacing. Um, oh, well, I, Ken, I'll ask you. When you hear of small block, big block, what do you think? What do you think the denomination between the two is? What makes one and what makes the other? It really comes down to bore spacing because the more bore spacing you have, the bigger possible bore you can get. Yes. Yep. Absolutely. So I've had this. Uh, I've had this discussion with a lot of people. I'm going to say discussion, not argument, because there has to be valid statements between all of them. Um, but you look at a small block Chevy, that could be a three, 305. Um, it could be a 350. And then you had, well, you had the 327 as well. Excuse me, 327, 350. And then you had the 400. Yep. Okay. A lot of people say that the, the actual physical um, 
cubic inch number is what makes the um, small block, big block denomination or, or classification, I should say. I don't believe that at all because you look at a 400, that's a small block, you know. Right. But if you, you know, Pontiac 400, small block, um, then you look at a 427, which is technically a small block, you know, it has the same block as a 350 or 400 board over, you know, and then you look at a, um, you know, 440 Mopar or the 3D3 Mopar, which is smaller, but that is also a big block. Right. So, uh, well, that's agree what... because the Mopars, they, they had this, they had like a, a smaller uh, cubic inch big blocks, you know, they yep. have a big block mm -hmm. they're smaller cubic inch. Um, this comment kind of ties into what we're talking about when it comes mm -hmm. to like the platform and, and, and uh, the overall of it. Uh, compared to a Coyote, what, what pros and cons? Coyote, uh, Godzilla, what, what, what do you think? Um, I'm, I want to be careful. Is, when it, I say is it a U-Haul engine? Is, is it just a big work engine? Like what? Yeah. What oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's in a Super Duty. Uh, it's going to be used to be pulling stuff up and down mountains. It's going to be used for a lot of mileage. It's going to be used for a lot of hard, hard work. So, um, in a way, I wouldn't. I wouldn't call it like. Um, I mean, I guess I wouldn't call it like a. Well, I guess this comment says the Coyote guys are calling it a U-Haul engine. Yes, I would say it's a U-Haul engine. It's just like the 6.0 that well that you see getting pulled out of U-Hauls um, because they are put inside Amazon trucks now. Um, I think they were put in the U-Haul stuff as well. So, yeah, basically, you could yank this thing out. You could stick it in your car. You could go 10, 50s with it. No problem. Have well, I fun feel, all day. I feel like they're using it in, in, as a negative term, right? Because, oh, <laughs> right, right. Because all of the LS guys, they get, they, they, they make fun of the truck engines, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I guess that's kind of what this is, right? Oh, it's just a truck engine. So, like, like, do, do you think what's better? Coyote, like pros and cons, you know? So, um, pros and cons. Okay. Coyotes are all aluminum. Yeah. They're, they are physically bigger, which kind of puts it as a down mark. Uh, but they are lighter. Yeah. They're wide. Yeah. So, so yeah, wide, bigger. Um, they can RPM a lot more. So coyotes can, so that's always a plus. Um, they're harder to work on. Uh, and I say that loosely because you have some guys who, can do a whole coyote engine and you know cams and everything in 15 minutes um and then you have you know the godzilla which you know if you're a cam and block kind of guy and you're old school you can do it the same amount of time so it just depends on the person um coyote uh more parts are more readily available which is nice because godzilla is a newer platform so you do have new parts but they're not as you know available um, so you have a limited number of per, uh, performance parts for the Godzilla at this point in time. Um, what else? I ca coyotes are six bolt mains, aren't they? I'm pretty sure they are. Yeah, they're all deep sturdy crossbow stuff. I believe. Yeah. Um, I would say I, th I think it's really a toss up. It really depends on who you are. Like if you don't care about weight and you just want to go out and have fun, you know, Godzilla is the choice. If you are strictly a performance racing you know i want the lightest thing as possible unfortunately no well i don't want to say unfortunately because i know it's going to happen at one point but there's no aluminum godzilla blocks yet um right. so that's where you pick up a coyote engine and go and have fun with it you know right so th that's what i would say the balance between the two or or the differences between the two would be that one okay so, so, so good stuff good stuff um so let, let's talk a little bit about uh, your your pet project, I guess we'll call it. So you start working uh, together on this um, on this Godzilla stuff, mm -hmm. and you 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 were building a truck, right? Um, yes. So what was the original vision of the truck? Like, well, what did it start out as, and then we'll get to where where it is now going, right? So I was in college, and I put my truck up for sale at a 2003 Dodge Ram 1500. Uh, I think it was like an eight inch lift kit on 37s. Um, it was a awesome truck, but it got like eight miles to the gallon. So it wasn't that good practical driving back and forth to college because I drove, it was like a two hour drive to college. So I had put my truck up for sale or for trade, either one. I had this guy who, uh, it's a funny story. 
So he had a 1970 Ford Maverick, and it was a blacked out Maverick. It had a 351, I think, in it. And this, he sent me a video of it, and I'm like, man, this thing is rowdy. You know, it sounded wild. It had a cage in it, and I was like, and he street drove it, and I'm like, I was like, man, I kind of, I kind of want it, but my buddy Dylan, he's telling me, he's like, Jake, that's not practical. Like, you can't drive it. And I was like, ah, uh, okay, all right. So I told him no, and I said, all right, well, you know, sorry, I really like the car, but unfortunately, it's not really what I'm looking for. Two weeks later, I get another message. It says, hey. Um, I'll trade you. I have a 82 Chevy S10 with a small block in it. And I'm like, I'm like, okay, whatever. So he sends me the picture and it is the same garage that this Ford Maverick was sitting in. So he sends me more pictures of it and he sends me a video of him walking around the car. I'm like, oh my God, it's the same guy. So I went on marketplace. I looked, it was the same guy. And I said, aren't you the one that tried to sell me the Maverick or trade me the Maverick? And he's like, yeah, but I really want your truck. So I figured I'd find something that you might like. So I was like, I was like, dude, if you, if you went that far, cause you really want this truck. I was like, all right. I said, bring the truck by. I'll take a look at it. So he came, um, my buddy Dylan was with me. We, he came to my house and, um, I hop in the, the guy pulls up and I look at the truck and I'm like, man, this is like, it's down low to the ground. It's got the big old six inch, you know, scoop yeah. on it. I'm, I'm like, dude, this truck is sick. So, and he's got cutouts on it and it's just a bad sounding truck. And I'm like, all right, well, I'll go, I'll hop in for a ride. So I think he went around the block in my, my lifted truck first. And then I went for a drive and I went down the road and uh, it had like a 4,000 stall converter. So it didn't have a whole lot of, you know, oomph in it. You know, you really had to get it up in RPM to really see anything. And it was a, it was like a 355. It wasn't much. But right. as soon as I got in and I fell in love with it, I was like, oh, my God. I was like, I should have not gotten in this truck. I love it so much. So we got back and I was like, all right, you know, no cash, just straight trade. Yeah. All right, cool. Let's swap. So I got the I got the S10. He got the Ram. Um, and I think that that weekend um, I got the truck on a Thursday, I think. I think it was a Thursday. Friday morning, uh, we went to Secretary of State. I got it put in my name, and I got insurance on it. And I think that first weekend, we went out to Milan Dragway with it to go uh, test and tune it. And it went like 1288 at 102. And I was told I had a bunch of stuff in it that it didn't. And me ended up finding out it didn't have in it. Like, it, I was told it had like a – well, it ended up having a locker in it, but um, – I was told like I had like a 411 gear in it and then come to find out I had like a 325. Um, I was told the motor had a bunch of stuff done to it. I take the valve covers off and take off. It doesn't have any of the stuff that it said it had, but no big deal. It was a good truck. I had fun with it. Right. So um, the first winter I, I crawled under the truck and I looked and the wiring was an absolute mess. And I'm like, I can't, I can't drive this truck knowing that the wiring is as bad as it is. So, um, this is when I was like starting to dabble into wiring a little bit, but I wasn't super good. So there's a guy named Willie Shaw who is a local guy. Uh, I, I mean, I can't even explain how phenomenal he is with wiring. It's like every little wire you see is color coded, zip tied, everything. It's like come from a production factory from the highest end car dealership or not right. car, he's, car he's manufacturer. Good. Yeah, he's very good. Um, so we traded, I traded labor with him, you know, I did a bunch of work for him and he ended up making me a whole electrical panel switchboard and everything for the truck. I just had to install it. So that first winter I got it, I put everything in, installed everything. First fire up in the garage at like 2 AM. My mom's sleeping in the house. I'm in the garage and I'm like throttle whacking the hell out of it. You know, my mom opens the door, shut that truck off. And I'm like, all right, sorry. Um, but so we got the truck running, went out to Milan. It, I think it did the same thing. It did like, uh, you know, 1280s, you know, 1290s, somewhere around there. And uh, I was like, all right, you know, I got the truck running. I know the electrical is good. You know, there's some janky stuff to this truck as it is, but I'll figure out what I can do to fix it. And um, so I was like, all right, well, I'll build a 383 for it. The classic 383, right? Yes, Every the classic 383. Like, I don't know, but th th this was my period. Because back in the day, dude, at that time period, everybody 
had an S10 or their uncle had an S10 and it mm. had the 383 in it. Right, know? right. That yeah. the front wheels could go over a pop can. Oh, know, yeah. At, at the stoplight in front of Sonic. Yeah. yeah. So I, um, I get this. Okay. So, so you're thinking 383, right? Yeah. So this is when I started working at the at the race shop at Fast Time Racing Engines uh, when I was like swooping the floors and stuff. So um i was in college uh i was doing some welding classes and stuff like that i was working at a parts store too um i decided to you know dump all my money into my truck because i'm 18 19 years old why wouldn't i do anything else um so i took and bought a i bought a 50 block off marketplace four bolt main virgin block too wasn't even touched um from a guy down in toledo for like 70 bucks and i'm like this is a steal so i bought the block i got a buddy that i went to college with he had a set of afr um cylinder heads that were as cast so they weren't even ported um i ended up porting the cylinder heads myself we had a flow bench at work so i was able to do pre pre um you know port and polish to post port and polish cfm number differences which were insane i think it went from uh at six 600 lift or 650 lift it went from 276 cfm up to 340 330 340 something like that That, that's pretty decent yeah yeah so they they flew pretty good um i ended up buying the uh eagle 3d3 stroker kit for it um i bought all the parts and pieces put this together and then um decided, all right, well, it's time to sell everything and buy an LS because at that time, everybody's like, let's put an LS and S10s. And, you know, when you're a dumb kid, you're like, oh, okay, I'm just going to do what everybody else is doing because parts will be available easily. Uh, I have a lot of tech guys that will be able to help. And then that's when it led us to, I started working for Brian and Brian always made the comments of, you you should put a Godzilla in it and blah, blah, blah. So I had all my money from my Godzilla stuff or excuse me for my uh ls you know gonna purchase an ls and all the stuff to do it right right and uh i ended up buying a bunch of stuff for the chassis like the roll cage i bought like uh frame rails i bought everything to do like my truck so then i had no money and then uh i was like all right well i'll start building up money for uh to buy the godzilla and then um so then basically I saved up a bunch of money, gave to Brian and said, you know, this is what I want to do. So he provided me with all the parts and we put it all together and now it's sitting on a uh, engine stand ready for dyno. So. Gotcha. So, so you went away from the LS, which, you know, I, I, I like LS. I think everybody. I do too. I absolutely do without a doubt. I can see, I can see the, the draw, especially you know, because it has it has decent, like a lot more displacement. Um, yeah, about a hundred more uh, in stock form, has about a hundred more horsepower. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, all, so there, there were there were perks. Okay, so you, so your boss talked you in into going to Godzilla. All right. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so like I just kind of some like other specs with this engine. So advertised from Ford, this engine makes four hundred and thirty horsepower. Um, with our dyno, and this is all information that's been collected from Brian and Willis Performance Enterprises. So this is stuff that I learned from him. This isn't stuff that I specifically done myself. Right. Uh, but um, some of the stuff I've learned from myself, but like I said, I, I I didn't do like, you know, we did this as a business, not as me specifically. So I just want to let everybody know that. Um, so it made 430 horsepower advertised from the dealership. Um, with no fee, when we run it on our dyno, a crate engine, basically you get it from Ford, $6,500. You get the, the seven, three Godzilla. Um, it makes on our dyno 507 horsepower, but that's with no fee ed electric water pump, right. um, 93 octane and dyno headers. So you got a little more throat coming out of it. You have a little bit more fuel. Um, right. and, uh, you have no accessory drives, like an alternator, power steering pump, all that kind of stuff. Right. And I think most people understand that because anybody that watched the Richard Holdner knows, you know, yeah, yeah. Water, no accessories, uh, yeah. more aggressive tune, 
Because what, what are you doing when you're drag racing? You're not using that kind of stuff. And right. I think for like the market that, that Brian was trying or is trying to target is not just the people that want to drive on the street, but the people that want to drag race as well. Um, <laughs> so um, also that engine was controlled by OBR system. And that OBR system is um, obviously aftermarket. It isn't factory uh, ECU. So you're able to do a bunch of different um, combinations and stuff like that as well. So do you know, do you know what trigger wheel pattern it uses? It I'm uses a, I think it's a coyote. Um, I think coyote? The, yeah, the coyote has the same. So uh, what's kind of was another thing that's cool about the Godzilla that uh, some people on here may not know is that the Godzilla has a modular Ford bell housing. So um, a 4654 and the Coyote, um, the Godzilla also shares the same bell housing. So any transmission you put behind those, you can put behind on this truck or um, on this um, engine. And it was funny because I got into... I don't, I don't want to say an argument, but I had a guy who was very uh, adamant about his answer because um, I posted in a uh, form that I wanted to do a manual transmission with the truck. And somebody had said, no, you can't do that with a uh, Godzilla. The bell housing won't work. And I said, right. we have one in our shop Mustang, so we definitely can. Um but as uh, Richie, your question, uh, it has variable cam timing. Yes, it does, which is also going to bring us into this other discussion. I want to have talk to you guys about some of the part failures that we have had. Um, that is pretty much um, public information. So um, we do have VCT on this engine, which is very nice, depending on what power level you want to have and what you want to do with it. Um, so the one thing that we have had happen is we did have a VCT bolt snap um, on one engine. Mm -hmm. So unfortunately, it was kind of crappy for the customer, but kind of good. Um, you know, it sucked for him because, you know, snapped a VCT bolt. Um, but in the process, we got to learn, you know, why and ways that we can fix it. So um basically when you look at the vct system on the godzilla um what happens is we have an oil feed that comes up through our main uh camshaft journal um or through our cam main number one cam main on our camshaft uh sorry i'm getting distracted <laughs> i'm getting distracted um so the oil flows through the camshaft and then comes out the front through the bolt and then um allows oil flow to our vct system so what had happened was is somehow, some way, the torque of the camshaft, um, you know, the front of the cam twisting, it snapped the bolt. At that time, then you have valves that hit pistons, and it's just not a good day for anybody. Bad time. Yeah, yeah bad, bad time. So what we ended up doing was is we um, talked to a couple different companies. We were able to come up with a design um, for a new uh, Campbell that is uh, locked out basically. So at that time for performance engines, uh, you no longer have the variable cam timing because you will not have oil flow because it is a solid bolt. Um, also with the VCT systems, uh, Willis Performance does sell them as well. Um, the VCT lockout kits. So they're basically like little pucks that go, you can take your, uh, your VCT apart and you can put these pucks in and it locks out the timing. So that way you can run, you know, nothing's variable. It all stays the same wherever you want. Right. Depending on your power level, depending on your build, you can put either set or wedge sets A, B, C, D in, and that'll change your timing. I believe it's by two degrees. So, okay. So that's, that's one of the weak points. Uh, yes. This is, kind of a, this is kind of a good question. Mm -hmm. um, what, are what do you know what ford is seeing as far as failures in these engines yes uh so richie i see you i commented about the white cams that is uh true um and the reason why they from what we have experienced so far the reason why the cams have been wiped is because of a flaw in the castings from the lifters the lifters have caused it um so i we have caught it on a few customer engines luckily 
um, with the factory lifters is the rollers themselves start to flake or etch. And then um, once that happens, it's cyanar to the camshaft and everything gets dropped down below. And then we eat up rod bearings and main bearings and all that kind of stuff. So right. um, what we have found, and it, it's not in every single one. That's the one thing I try to tell people is like, and I don't, I don't even know if it's a specific, um, you know, specific uh, build date of when these lifters have had this, these issues. So I just know that if you have it, you want to check your oil very regularly. Um, you know, if you notice any abnormal flaking or abnormal me metallic, you know, in your oil, that's why I recommend changing your oil. It doesn't matter if it's the Godzilla, Coyote LS, uh, Big Black Mopar. It doesn't matter. Do your oil change every 3,000 miles. I mean, especially if it's a high dollar engine. Um, yeah, Ford has a bad habit of recommending... 10,000 mile oil changes. I hate that idea. I absolutely hate it. I mean, I understand you're saving yourself money and labor, but at the same time, um, preventative maintenance is the best thing you can do. Um, so anyways, uh, yeah, the lifters, um, we found out that in order to fix that, um, or not necessarily fix it, uh, we have found that Johnson lifters, we can actually take out the uh, factory lifters, the Johnson lifter, tie bar lifters, hydraulic roller lifters will fit exactly in the bores. Um, you can take out the stock trays. You don't even have to use the stock trays back in it. You put them in. And like we had talked about earlier, is that the only thing that kind of makes it a little difficult for like the average backyard mechanic um, is once you do that, you have to get select foot, uh, select fit push rods for those. So um i think the, there's a certain method and if you if anybody looks uh revan evan on youtube uh seven three godzilla uh push rods i mean i think if you just put those words in um you'll find a video that brian describes um exactly what you have to do in order to get those select uh push rods to fit perfectly you know for that application because you have differences between machine pedestals on the cylinder heads you know, there's a bunch of different factors that are going to, you know, determine the height of the rockers. I mean, I'm sure you definitely know with having your 300, you know, yeah. you need Frankenstein I, yeah, I engine. Had to, I had to measure out custom push rods for it. So yeah. I yeah. I mean, yeah. But, well, that like, I can't fault the engine. Um, every manufacturer like uh, Dodge had its crazy cam and lifter problem. That, yep. Three Hemis, mm -hmm. LS. Bill is the LS are still having problems with displacement on demand. So mm -hmm. that's an every man, every manufacturer has something that needs fixed. You know, it, it's just no big deal um, as they get more complicated. But so I, I can clearly see that you definitely uh, like the platform. Uh, which oh, is yeah. Good. Yeah. Do you, do you think the aftermarket is going to start picking up um, as far as parts? Uh, what, what, what do you see happening there? Okay. It is like almost like you're reading the sheet right off my table. That is so cool that you said that. Um, uh, first thing, Dean, thank you very much uh, for He's being here. Right, thank you. Number. That's awesome. No, thank you very much. I'm so happy I'm here. Um, as far as the future for these engines, um, I was thinking about a couple of days ago, which is funny. Um, we look at the aftermarket support that we have right now. Um, a lot of the cool things is some of the parts are interchangeable from like the uh, modular five fours and the coyotes, like main bearings and rod bearings are, um, I think it's the main bearings are the same, uh, but like Clevite and you have King bearings, like those um, all fit in the Godzilla. So you can use those. Um, now, another thing too, that I have these written down. So I'm kind of looking at these as I go. Um, for, uh, connecting rods, we have Cali's, which is a big supporter of the Godzilla platform. Obviously right now they just came out with a stroker crankshaft and they announced it at PRI, um, which oh. is absolutely awesome. I think it put it up to like 476 cubic inch, somewhere around there. Um, so you get a little bit of more stroke out of it, but Cali's is really good. Now K1 are the rods that I have inside my engine. And apparently you can't get them anymore. I've heard that they are discontinued. Wow. So 
which kind of sucks because you know k1 does a lot with uh the ls platform and they also do a lot for small block chevys as well i think they do other stuff too but i'm i'm not 100 percent sure so again it's just rumor mill that they don't they don't provide parts for their release they're done um uh jake can you talk about the intake manifold so they don't have Yes, absolutely. I will talk about that in just one second. Um, some of the other parts that are being provided, like now Texas Speed has now came out with a bunch of different camshafts for this engine, which is awesome for boosted applications, naturally aspirated. You know, they're on their uh, BTR, Brian Tooley Racing. Uh, I have their intake on my engine uh, that we're going to run hopefully soon. Um, and then uh, – Another cool thing, too, about the engine is you can get uh, roller bearings, too, for them, which you don't really see too much anymore um, as far as, like, I don't know, small black Chevys. Like, only the really high-performance, like, sprint sprint car engines really had roller bearings unless it's a, it's a big, you know, like, NA motor. So right. they provide those for the – here as well. I don't – I think you – I'm trying to remember. You have to order a specific camshaft because the bearings are over – or the uh, cam journals are oversized, but um, – yeah, so there's a bunch of different aftermarket parts for it. Uh, to talk about the intake manifolds, um, it's pretty cool to see, like, it was almost like intake manifolds were, like, the first thing that people in the aftermarket world were trying to fix. Or, or, or not fix, but change and build I new like designs. Fair, because everybody hates stock intakes, like everybody. Yes, so, that is very true. Form perfectly fine. People still mm. hate it. Well, so that's... I that's funny because if you look at the if you look at the factory 2020 Godzilla intakes, they have the most ugliest intake ever because the intake swoops upwards. It goes at like a like a almost like a 60 degree upward angle. So to put like I don't know if I, I don't know if I sent you the picture or not. I don't I know I don't have it on this computer, but um, we did a pro charger on the dyno. Uh, this was one of the first pro chargers we did. Um, and it was funny because I was looking at this picture before we started today. Um, you can see you have, you know, your um, intercooler coming out uh, and then your uh, charge pipe coming out, going up to the blow off valve on the steel pipe. And then it like comes up and then all of a sudden it dumps straight into the intake at a very abrupt angle. And I understand that um, I understand that in a factory application, we have a small package area. So you have to find a way to get the intake to be happy with the compartment that's getting put in. But man, for just like, I don't know, you know, I don't know why this design would have been, you know, gone through. So um, I think it was the 2022 model year they changed up the intake so now that the throttle body opening is more you know horizontal than right. up at a up at a different uh angle so, so here's a question well since mm -hmm. we're talking about, about intakes and i don't know so that's why i'm asking mm -hmm. is this is this port injected or direct injected this is port injected it is it is port it's port yeah God. yeah really? yep. yeah so that's we range for a for a, for a new motor Yes. Yeah, I agree. So um, on the tops of the engine, I think on one of the pictures, I'm trying to think of one of the pictures that I sent you. I think it was with the rocker arms on. Maybe it was a top hand side, but we can, get, we can get into them pictures. Okay. So if yeah. You want to now we can. Yeah. If you want to pull those up just so these guys can see. Right. Um, this should work. Boom. So and that's I'm the way that the pictures are kind of small guys. Uh, I'm probably going to put this uh, this whole PDF of all these pictures in the Facebook group. So if you want to see it, look at it later for your own interest. Go to the Facebook group. I'll get it put in there. But this is like the best way I could get these pictures mm -hmm. on the screen. So, um, but yeah, so I guess, you know, just kind of tell us, uh, this is your engine, I take it here? Yeah, yep. So that one's my engine. Yep, that one was fresh from uh, Dave Petit. Got a hone, board and hone from him. So on my engine, uh, we went 10 over. So it's a four, uh, 447 instead of 445. Um, you know, two cubic inch change, you know, not much, but. Not crazy, right, right. No, no, no. But yeah, it's uh, it, but it, it's a solid foundation, you know. Okay, let's see what I got next. Okay, so we got we got pistons from Diamond. Yep, Very yep. Nice. 
This is all this is all my build. This is all the stuff that went on this stuff. Stuff. Yep, all my stuff. Yep. Do anything to say on the pistons? Is there anything special about them? Um, not really. These are off the shelf pistons. I didn't get any custom ones. Um, but these are 12 and a half to one, or they're 12.2 to one compression ratio uh pistons with uh our cylinder heads that we have from WPE. So are these, are these off the shelf for this application or are they, are they for something else that just no happened? you can call Diamond and say hey I want 12.2 to one compression you know uh Godzilla pistons and they will pull these ones right off their production shelf and say here you go. Very cool. Very cool. So right. we got rings, simple stuff. Uh very tough looking block I will say that. Yes, it's got a really aggressive look to it. I, it's funny. I was wondering if anybody ever thought the same thing when I was putting it together. Uh, okay. So, you have just base stuff, putting pistons mm. in. The bottom end looks incredibly beefy. Yes. Yeah. The the six bolt mains, uh, deep skirt, everything sits, you know, high inside the block. Um, you know, and the, and the cool thing, you know, even with this, uh, with the rods, there was no clearancing needed, you know. Um, now, with the Cali crankshaft coming out, um, I don't know if there's any clearancing in this block that is needed. I'm very curious to find out. I'm sure there will be, but, at, you know, at this level so far, there's nothing you have to change. Gotcha. Okay. All right. Sorry, I'm just trying to move. Oh, no, right. you're good. All right. Like I said, yeah, it's just a very overall tough-looking block. I, I will say that. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, so here is a good question. Uh, the stock rod, are they that forged powder metal rod? Is that what they are? Yes, the stock rods are powdered. Yep. Uh, they are cracked as well. So if oh, you're... Oh, cracked half too. Okay. Yeah, so if you're ever taking them apart, make sure you number each side yep. so that way you know you don't put them on backwards. Uh, okay, so head studs. So yep. are, those, are those off the shelf too or... Yes. Um, oh, God, I can't remember the name. Uh, it's S S P E or S P C, I think. Uh, uh, head studs. Uh, so they're a newer. Uh, I mean, obviously, it's a newer platform. I think they were a newer company in general, um, okay. but they provided the kit uh, for everything for the Godzilla. Um, so I, I mean, they're from when I put this thing together just over the past. Th- three, four months, you know, I had, I was absolutely floored by it. Um, what what rods did you end up using? So I used the K one rods. Um, yep. So I didn't use the stock rods just because I knew I was going high RPM and so I've, I've mentioned this before, but since we're talking about rods, what in your opinion would you say is a good limit for stock rod stock rotating pistons and rods? What would you say is a good stock Stock power limit. So I probably wouldn't go any higher than probably 600, you yeah. know, on on a stock setup because, you know, you just start putting the stock stuff, you know, too far. And right. especially if you don't gap the rings at all, you know, right. it, it just, well, things so, can get, things can get messy pretty quickly. Right. So with, with, you know, with good fuel gap rings and like a, a conservative tune, you could probably push it further, but that that's fair. Oh yeah. Yeah. I, w- I would say once you start hitting 600, I would say, okay, now it's time to start upgrading pistons and cam and stuff like that. So, so here's the first picture of the cylinder head and this thing, like it's pretty big. I mean, it's mm. not, it's not like, you know, dual overhead, but it's a pretty big head. It, yeah. Obviously we can see why it flows so well. Yeah. So those are, uh, with those cylinder heads that are on there, um, so that's got the pack springs, that's got the manly valves, um, and then those are VED ported, those um, intakes, you know, intake and exhaust ports, those are all CNC ported. So, um, you know, they flow really, really good as well. Um, and then those are just factory rockers. Um, those came in the production, uh, block. They just go right back in with no issue whatsoever. So, right. Uh, do you know what the stock rod bolt fastener size is? Mm, it's metric. Uh, but I think it's, uh, three eighths, you know, okay. to the, to the equivalent. I think right, right. Yeah. All right. Let's see what else we got here. Okay. So that, what intake is that right there? So that is the new Brian Tooley, uh, racing Trinity intake. Um, which is awesome because it uses the same plenum, uh, the same upper plenum as the LS version or the, um, or the Hemi. 
Um, and the port runners are actually uh, different, obviously, to fit like the Godzilla right, or the LS right. or, you know, um, Gen 3 Hemi. But if you look at it, too, uh, you have bosses up top where you can put yeah. in. Yeah. You could drill into those and do like a nitrous kit or you, if you want to do ba uh, anything bigger, um, you can put bigger injectors in there. You know, if you run an alcohol and you want to run 16 injectors right. instead of eight, you know, you have the ability to do that, too. So they made it really awesome to have those um, already precasted in there. And I, I know because I was, um, you know, I heard from Brian for a long time before they released it. Uh, about the casting and what they wanted to do and the designs and stuff like that. Um, you know, it was just cool to hear all the different ideas that they had, but for them to come out with something so beautiful and right. uh, just an amazing intake, it was so cool to actually see it sitting on one of these engines, you know? So you said that your heads were CNC ported, right? Yes. Yep. Can you give us some flow numbers stock and then what the, the port job did? Honestly, uh, we do not have uh, any information on the flow numbers, to be 100% honest with you. Um, the Visner, uh, VED, Visner Engine Development, they're out of Grand Rapids. They do all the CNC port, and they do all the flow stuff, but they don't release it to us, so we don't even know what they flow. I know they flow a lot because we can run them back and forth on the dyno, but right. you know, from my knowledge, I, I mean, that may be something that Brian knows that I don't know. But at this point, I, I don't know what the yeah. phone numbers are. Well, that's something that's something that we'll have to follow up on. Yeah, absolutely. So this, what is this? The front cover slash water pump? Like what we Yeah, have? yeah. So this is the front engine cover. Um, this was this isn't this is factory, but this is modified. So um, if you if you look at a factory one, um, a front cover, you have a lot of accessory bracketry going on on the sides it almost looks like bat wings coming off of it um because i was doing a motor plate on the front um i wanted to cut all that stuff off so that way just like you can see in there that motor plate had to go in there so i had to do a lot of right. modifying um to get that motor plate to fit so i i i will see in a little bit but i i do like the way that you did the motor plate in the front like it, it seemed like it thank um, you so these things run zero twenty five weight. Um. So let me read this comment. I've heard that the Boss six two Godzilla six eight and seven threes run really tight crank clearances due to the zero twenty five weight oils. Uh, ch -ch -ch -ch. So um, it do it does run thick oil. That is absolutely true. Um, with factory clearances, we're looking at on the rods and mains. You're looking at two three to two five they're pretty tight um so that's point zero zero two three point zero zero two five so they're, they're pretty tight i'm not that, gonna lie that is really tight <clears throat> yes um and even with uh you know run 5w30 in our engines uh we run i think we ran like 10 30 5 30 and 10 30 so we go back and forth uh between break in um it's been a while since I've been in the dyno room to put oil in it, to be honest with you. But um, I, I'm more than certain we run the 5W30 uh, for breaking, and then we run 10W30 once it's done um, oh, okay. and re re ready to go to the customer. But when we look at um, other engines, you know, like higher higher revving engines, stuff like that, stuff that's going to be, you know, used and abused a lot more. Um, when I set clearances, um, I like the point zero zero two five so two and a half thousandths of clearance up to three um just because it gives you a little more wiggle room um it gets a little more oil in those in between you know your main bearings and you know your crank and, and even your rods and stuff like that right. um so i like to use um i like to use bigger clearances because that's mostly like what i do when i'm there too is I'm doing clearances, I'm doing, um, you know, final assembly, I'm doing uh, ring end gaps, you know, I, I'm doing pretty much a, a lot of stuff along with Brian too. He's doing a lot of stuff too. But that's one thing I like to keep them, you know, a little bit higher just because I don't want to take the chance of the crankshaft grabbing a bearing um, yeah. and ripping it apart, you know. Yeah, especially that that's pretty tight on thin oil, if I mean, depending on what you run. And yeah, yeah. I, that that seems like pretty tight to me. Um, all right, let's see what else we got going on here. All right, so here's your your mid plate installed in the truck, right? Yep. Yep. 
yeah, that was a fun one trying to get all those, all the bracket tree in there. <laughs> no, it looked like I said, I, I, I was looking at these when I was putting together this, this file here. Yeah. And uh, they look pretty good. Also, if I do happen to dip out on you, like my internet's acting kind of wonky tonight. Cause, oh, no, you're good. You're good. I remember the other night it was going through that stuff. Yeah. So, all right. But yeah. So, like I said, here, here's it all mocked up in the truck. And like I said, I, Looks pretty good to me. It, so it's solid mounted, right, in the truck? Yeah, right? yep, yeah. No, uh, I do have a rubber mount on the transmission, but that's pretty much it. So, all right. Wake up, America. Hey, wake up, America. Where did you? I, this is the first time I've seen you in my life. So, so welcome, my dude. Uh, did you did you come from the driveway, engineer? Is that where you came from? I posted the link in there. Um, <laughs> Let's see the cleaning stuff. Really, blah blah blah. All right, let's see. Let's go and see what else we got going on here. All right, so here is the truck. Yes, yes. This was uh, when I finally got the truck back to my own garage at my own place, um, and just you know really decided, hey, I need to do something. You know, I need to finally get some work done on it. So, so, so I guess we can talk about like how me and you met, right? So. Mm -hmm. That cab on the truck, right, is not the original cab that was on there. No. Right. Uh, so I bought the original cab uh, for for a very sweet deal, I might add, <laughs> because you wanted a better cab. And, yes. And I have some choice words because the following pictures show what you did to that better cab. And it makes me... <laughs> It makes it's like, well, if you're going to cut it up that much, you could have just kept the worst cab. But right. I, yeah, I digress. Um, so, yeah. So, yes, here we see. So firewall knocked out of it. The motor is mocked up. Um, mm. uh, so did you do anything special on the front end? I see you. Uh, I know you back halved it, right? Yep. Yep. So and we got we got pictures of that. But did you do anything special in the front? Yeah. So uh, in the front. um at the very front, uh, I cut out the factory K-frame. Um, it, re it really wasn't a K-frame, um, but it, it was just a factory front uh, chassis, basically. Um, so I chopped the cr front cross member out. I put the Innova uh, uh, Innovation Racecraft uh, front K member in it. Uh, got it all welded in. Me and uh, one of my best friends, Craig Trombley, we got it all welded in and put in. Um, and then decided that we were going to put the godzilla in it and this was after i um i take that back the k-frame was put in because we were going to put the godzilla in it um wow. in, in order to get the engine low like we wanted it to um the factory k-frame couldn't be there so we had to cut that out and then put the innovation uh or yeah innovation racecraft uh k member in so, well dean really likes your truck uh apparently thank so. you thank you but yeah the see all right so more of the front yep um like i said looking good I, I like i like what you did with with uh recreating all the the things everything in the front looks oh good. actually actually go back to that that picture real quick i want to just so if you look at that front timing chain cover or the front cover that's with all the accessory brackets and stuff on there that was before i meet, machined everything so oh, that yeah. So that's what that factory front cover looked like compared to what I machined off of there and try to get everything, you know, cut off so that way I didn't have to worry about it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Because <clears throat> the only thing that I plan on running in that engine for accessory wise is an alternator. Eventually, once I do the pro charger and go bigger and go badder, then I'll probably do a vacuum pump. But for right now, I'm just going to do an alternator with a custom bracket really? and stuff like that. So. Interesting. All right. Let's see. All right, so different angle, more in the front. So, so you can see he started massacring this poor little S10 cab. Uh, yeah. Well, <laughs> well, I bought so I bought I bought the cab and the bed as a pair. I bought them off marketplace, and the guy that I bought it from said that it was completely rust free and <clears throat> that it was in very nice shape. Well, I went there. It was like the middle of winter and. I was cold and I looked at it and I'm like, it still had carpet. It had all interior in it. Uh, I think the seats were even still in it. So I was like, all right, you know, I didn't even think to like really pull up the carpet. One, I was cold yeah. and two, I was like, I just drove two and a half hours. I just want to get this thing and go home. Right. And then I get it home and I take it all apart and I realize, oh my God, there's so much rust. Now there's very few pitting like on the driver's side floor. Um, yeah. 
and I actually ended up like cleaning, like grinding all the stuff down. I put epoxy down and then I POR 15, the whole, uh, bottom wow. side. That's why it looks so pretty. But, wow. uh, yeah. So, I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't horrible. Uh, but it wasn't a show piece of a cab either, to be honest with you. Gotcha. So, but yeah, I massacred that thing pretty bad. Like I said, man, I was looking at these pictures and like, he could have just kept the cab he had. <laughs> yeah. Well, my original plan too is I didn't plan on cutting the floor out. I right, just was going right. to do the firewall. And then I realized once I, I, I pushed the motor back, I was like, man, I can't do that. I, it's not going to fit with me pushing the motor back. So, dude. That floor in that cab I got got off you though, dude. Choice, dude. It really is. <laughs> best, best rust belt floor I've ever seen, man. Yeah, yeah. It was definitely one for the books. So tell us about the rear end. What were you guys? This is a nine inch? Yep. So this is a nine inch. Um, this came out of a uh, I think it was like an F two fifty, like an eighties or nineties F two fifty. I can't remember exactly what it, but I got it and uh ended up chopping it out and then i used a jig put the uh ends on it so this is kind of a frankenstein rear end uh to be honest with you so it's a four nine inch but it's got dana 60 axle ends on it so yeah so the story behind that is is uh my former instructor he had uh gave me some axles to use for mock-up and but they were dana 60s and he's like you have a nine inch so just buy dana 60 ends and toss them on there and you can use these axles if you want because he, he had a 60 or he has a 65 dart and i have obviously my truck and the frame rail widths are almost exactly the same so he's like well you you have a nine inch but i have a dana but i have an extra set of axles here that'll work for you so i was right. like okay so i just bought the uh dana 60 eight and three quarter ends and put them on there which are beefy as they are Right. Um, and then I ended up having to get new, uh, I got Mosher axles for it too. So that's all, you know, different. So, but. so I guess like, I, I know the reason why, but I guess I'm going to walk through it. So mm -hmm. there's nowadays the debate really is, is nine inch or 8.8. .8, right. And I'm going to assume that at the power levels you're planning on pushing, uh, even though the nine inch has a little bit more power loss, like it, it's, that's why, yeah. you're doing it, right. Yeah. Um, so yeah. How much power are you planning on running? Like, what are your goals? Like, give us this simplified breakdown. So the engine that's in that's going to go in it right now, at least to the flywheel, should make 740, 750 um, <clears throat> really easily. I would love to, in the future, go and do a Pro Charger setup. I, I like turbos, but I like the reliability of a Pro Charger, you know, a supercharger no, or some type. Fair. Yeah. Pro chargers are neat, you know. Yeah. Uh, how much power have you guys made on one of these? Like, would you give us some figures because 750 isn't super impressive. So, give us, get impressed, these guys. What, what have you guys made? Uh, so, we've made on an engine dyno, I think it was 1900. Um, that was with the Whipple on there. Um, and then with Brian's, uh, the Whipple in the car, um, I think it made like. 1480 to the hub so it wasn't to the tire it was to the hub or it, it, yeah so I, 19, 19, 1900 blows my mind because yeah. th this this is a stock block like ls stuff don't don't do that on a stock block like no. that like so th that just goes to show you how like because I, I said it a couple times when we we're looking at pictures the block just looks beefy and oh yeah the, the, like stock block that just goes to show you like how tough it is yeah, it's, I mean, yeah, it's made 19 before. But yeah, so like with this rear end, I think it should handle, um, I got 35 spline axles for it. So I got, um, and then it's a strange center section, um, 456 gear. Uh, so I think this thing should be able to handle 1500 all day long without any issue. Yeah, that's, that's crazy. All right. So I'm going to be honest. So these pictures, I had a hard time organizing them to like kind of. Oh, that's up. fine. Yeah, so no, that's kind of all over the place. But I tried, I tried grouping them up. So, so we got the rear end in now. Um, so what kind of suspension did you did do when you back half it? So uh, wholeheartedly the whole time I was going to build this truck from the get go, I wanted to do a four link. Uh, my dad was doing a four link in his Coronet when he was younger. So I wanted to do the same thing in this. Um but it's a four link uh competition engineering kind of basic setup 
Um, I kind of modified some things because I wasn't happy with, um, I mean, it's not that I wasn't happy. I just knew that I could have did better or the truck could have had better. Um, so I upgraded like the uh, rod ends and stuff like that. I kind of changed some stuff up. Um, and then I also got QA1 coilovers for the rear double adjustable. Um, and then I'll probably have like 150 to 200 pound springs in the back. Um, but yeah, so for the rear end setup, I mean, it's pretty basic for a regular drag car. Um, but yeah, so it's just a four link coilovers, you know, the usual stuff. Gotcha. Gotcha. So, uh, yeah, like the work's very impressive. I think it's very impressive. Uh, thank you. Thank you. It's slightly beyond what I'm capable of right now. So major props, dude. Oh, you'll be able to do it. Don't worry. Like the work just looks, looks great. Um, because I, I, like we've talked about, I've been planning an S10 build. Uh, mine's not going to be as crazy as yours. Because I, mm. I want it to look stock for the most part. Because, like, you know. But, but yeah. So, no, this looks, like like you said, it's basic, but very well executed. Thank you. Thank you. And if yeah. you see anything as I'm flipping through these that you want to talk about, just let me know. Oh, no. Yeah, absolutely. No, these... Um... I did a lot of work. There was a lot of extra stuff that was added with this uh, chassis. Um, uh, this chassis itself was made uh, to be an 850 setup. Um, and I decided that I wanted to um, kind of go a little bit beyond an 850 setup. Uh, so you could cert for an eight for a 750. Once you have an 850 established, you have to have a, quite a few uh, bars added. Um, mm -hmm. And not necessarily for... Um, the cert itself, but I wanted to be safe, you know? And so I added all these bars like this X bar. Um, this was recommended from uh, Bobby Williams, who is one of the guys that I look up to the most in the fabricating world. Um, he's a local guy. He's built so many cars, uh, so many drag racing stuff. Um, so I think that with his, um, with his insight and his knowledge and his help, uh, he helped me do so you see this uh, kind of the horseshoe look of this uh, down bar in the back I always call this the bobby bar because <laughs> because I was just going to do straight bars down and right. Bobby said no you want to do like a horseshoe kind of like the pro stock so I always call it the bobby bar and then uh, I thought this thing was ready to go and he looked at it and he said put an x in there so me and uh, Craig knocked out an x in one night put it in there and you know, uh, just try to add a little bit here and there. You know, it's all so, mild steel. Stupid question, I no, guess. No stupid questions. So this, this is this is a stupid question. So okay. I've seen some trucks come out the top of the cab so they can keep their back window. Yeah, yep. Um, I don't know. I kind of like having a back window. I don't know. Yeah, I agree. Really, I agree. It's not really a question. It's just kind of a statement, I guess. Yeah, yeah. No, I like the back windows. That was a tough one for me with this truck was deciding if I wanted to put the – um if I wanted to shove the main hoop as far up as I could, so that way I can have the right. down bars coming out the top. Right. <clears throat> and then I got a brainstorm one idea, or I had a brainstorm idea one day and I'm like, Oh, I know how I can make this work. So my plan is, is I'm just going to kind of like most guys, you just cut out the horseshoe of the top for the glass to slide in from the bottom. And then I'm just going to take the remainder plate that I have you know, and flush finish it and then just put it right back over with some, uh, I think that it's just like gap tape, not gap tape, right. but it's like, it's like gap filler and put it in there. Something like that. Well, this thing should definitely be very rigid. I will, I will give it that. Like it's, it's gonna. Yeah. Yeah. I, I jack this thing up on one corner and the whole truck goes up. It's not, yeah. there's no, in so far there's no deflection in the chassis at all. It is stiff as could be. So I put this here because like that, that is some great fitting. Like that Thank is, you. that's just so good. Man. That, so that was, uh, this is the first cage that I've ever did. So this was like the infancy of the, this, like this joint right here was pretty much the infancy of me doing, you know, cage notching and all that kind of stuff. So I bought a, um, I bought a tubing notcher from Speedway Yeah, and I absolutely hated it. I like, I used it three times. I cranked my wrist, you know, it, it was just like, I can't do it. So I went to Bobby and I was like, dude, I can't, I can't, I tried using this tubing notch and it's not working. He's like, just use a grinder. I'm like, use a grinder. Why would I use a grinder? He's yeah. like, visualize the cut, cut it, notch it, 
I got a little drum roll. He said, use a flat disc and then use a drum roll and put it in place. I'm I like, was going to ask you if, well, how you did it. I kind of thought that that looked so good. You had to have uh, did the, the tape and grinder and yeah, it, look, it looks that good. So um, there's a, there's a method and I want to do uh Richie. Yes. All, all the chassis, all the cages TIG welded. I didn't do any MIG weld on any of it. Um, so it's um what 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 material is the cage? It's uh it's DOM mild steel. Um, oh, this mild, is, so I thought on mild steel you could MIG weld it, and then if you used uh what's the other stuff? What's the more expensive stuff? What chromoly? The chromoly, chromoly, yeah, yeah it's big, right? But this, yeah, so this is mild steel. Okay. Yeah, so I could have MIG this, but. I didn't want to. I just wanted to say, you know, I can TIG weld. Why not right. TIG weld it? That's fair. That's fair, right? And uh, one of my best friends, uh, uh, Craig Trombley, um, so he's a really, really good TIG welder. And so me and him always go back and forth on this whole thing. Like, he'll do a tube. I'll do a tube. I'll do fitment. He'll weld. He'll do a fitment. I'll weld. You know, we'll go back and forth with each other about it. But So here's, here's the rear of the truck pretty much done I, I assume right yeah yeah this is the most recent picture i think this was like september october um this was a, it was getting loaded up going into uh, my buddy's garage because i got a customer car going on right now but <clears throat> yeah that's the tires on there um right now i don't have a diagonal link so when we were pushing out of the garage at rear end wanted to walk anywhere right. it wanted to go yeah. and it was touching the corners of the cab and i'm or the the fender walls of the cab and i'm like ah oh, it's rubbing the tires i wasn't happy with it but um, number two says oh hell yeah 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 that, uh, thank you very much this has been a seven six seven year project and it's just now finally starting to really take off so i'm thank you guys very much it really means a lot to me all right so we're so we're doing the inside we're doing the inside cage now yep uh, uh the floor is still there i see uh, yep that's interesting yeah, um, I was making a hard decision if I want to cut it out or not. Yep, up oh, in there, it's gone. Yep, okay. completely gone. Uh, so let's talk about transmission options. Uh, what did mm -hmm. you think about using? What did you go with? How do you adapt them? Like, let, let's hear on that. So, uh, like I said before, we have a modular bell housing on the back, which is really nice because we already have the ability uh, to look at a couple different combinations. Um, I'm, like I said, I'm not too familiar with the forward world, especially with transmissions, but I know that it's modular and I know they make manual transmissions because obviously coyotes, uh, right. Mustangs have the stick shift. So I know they have it, um, whether it's a T56 or T5 or whatever it is, I'm not sure. Um, but anyways, so I decided for my power driven application that I was going to go with a turbo 400. Really, there was no other difference in my mind. Um, I had in this picture, that is a turbo 350. I had the turbo 50 already built and ready to go, um, for the, um, 3d3 uh, LS setup. Oh, it was okay. already all ready to go. Um, I think we did the, uh, six disc clutch. I built me and, uh, Rob Epler built it. Um, it had the six disc clutch in it. Um, direct drive drum. We did the 36 element sprag. Uh, we did a, a, a couple really good upgrades with it. So I thought it was going to be, you know, a really good setup rated for like, you know, 700 horsepower. Wasn't really going to go any higher than that. Right. right. <clears throat> um, especially with having a 383. And now that this thing's going to make 750, I'm going to blow that transmission up second pass guaranteed. And it has no trans brake too. So, ah, yeah. Yeah. So, but I was like, well, I'll get it mocked up, see what I like, blah, blah, blah. I was like, well, I'll just, I'll just run it because impatient me said I'm going to do it. So I got, I chopped the bell housing off. I bought the, uh, the JW bell housing and for the Ford modular, the bolts of the 350, 400 and said, I'm going to run that. And I got it mocked up in the engine or mocked up in the truck to the engine. Um, but yeah, it was de I'll definitely stick with the 400. And like we had talked about the other day, um, if I was to do any drag and drive event with this truck, I would probably do a 4L80. Um, but I would have to find a way to do a transmission control module. So right, and we talked about that. Um, MF or O2. Uh... You said you're Bill's inspiration. So oh, really thank like thank you very much. I didn't even realize you said that. Thank you very much. So, uh, I'm trying to keep an eye on the comments. 
Uh, but yeah, so like, so we, uh, so you're, you decided on the turbo 400, right? For now, that, that's kind of yeah. what you're going to go with. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I see we're doing some uh, CAD, some cardboard assisted design here. Absolutely. That's a good one. I haven't heard um, of that before. You haven't heard of that? <laughs> no, never heard of that. All right. Well, TM, uh, you can use it though. Okay. Um, but yeah. <laughs> so, how, so how far did you move the firewall back? Because you did, right? Uh, about seven inches. Seven? Okay. Well, the I, I take that back. Not seven inches. I think it was like four or five inches. Um, so I moved the engine and transmission back seven inches. Um, and the firewall was like almost touching or the engine was almost touching the firewall. So I pushed it back, uh, probably about five inches, I would say probably no more than that. And that's even enough to really give you no foot room, to be honest with you. Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of my problem on a lot of this stuff is I'm so freaking tall, mm -hmm. you know, like I would have to push the cage up to the top of the cab. I'd have to have foot room, you know? See, and, um, and that's where everybody said, man, you should have just did an extended cab. And I'm like, I should have, but I love my single cab short beds. It's just. Dude, I, I'm telling you, extended cabs, like if I were to do an extended cab Ranger, I would be a much happier man. Yes. That's yeah. Stuff to drive around. Uh, well, yeah, so go ahead. No, no, you're good. You're good. Oh, go no. Ahead. No, that's just the same. Like, if you look at S10 guys, I mean, even Ranger guys that have extended cabs, like, their bodies are sitting behind the door yep. frame. Like, you're yep. sitting way back, and it's got to be way more comfortable. I, I would almost guarantee it. Well, I'll tell you what, not to change the subject, but the very first Cyclone, the uh, the original, like the prototype, mm -hmm. they built it. They built it. I, they built it from an extended cab. They never really? made extended cab Cyclones. But the the prototype was it was an extended cab. I wonder so, why they never ended up going through with it because I feel like I feel like a lot of people would have bought it. You know, I, I mean, know. I know the Cyclones they they bought out a lot of them, but I think in general, if they would have made the extended cabs, I you know it'd be interesting to see a, a four door too. They had the type was the Typhoon that was the um, that was like the Blazer version, right? Blazer. It was the yeah. Blazer. Yeah, but that was two door, right? That was two door. Yeah, they they did they did do it. Like I said, uh, I've I've been toying because I'm I'm gonna make a clone and I got that cab off of you, but mm -hmm. I, I have an extended cab and I've been toying around with the idea of making a clone of the prototype for shits and giggles. But okay, anywho, um, yeah, so we're just doing door bars, you know, basic stuff. Yeah, those uh, those X's that you see that go from the uh, top of like the dash bar that go yeah. down to the bottom. Those are the added bars that I put in just because safety. And um, again, if I ever wanted to do a 750 in the future, uh, those bars are already done. So I don't have to worry about it. But Gotcha. All right. Let's see. All right. So so what are we doing here? There's a lot going on. in this. <laughs> so this was I had a hair up my butt. And I said, I need to, I got to get this floor done, figured out somehow. So it looks like a big old exoskeleton under there. Um, I got some one inch tubing from Bobby Williams. And uh, I was like, okay, I got to make like a, a, a frame for the floor to sit on. Because obviously I chopped out all the structure. I took everything out. Now the floor has to sit on top of something. Right. So um, I made all the... Um, uh, drive staff safety loops back there. Those are all handmade. Um, you can buy them from like quarter max and stuff like that, but they're like a hundred dollars a hoop and I didn't want to do that. So I was like, all right, well I'll make my own. So I ended up making my own. And then I, you know, did the, uh, outriggers me and Craig, uh, pretty much knocked it out in one day doing the whole floor. Um, you know, there's a few other bars we had to do or had to do, but uh, we had to get around the transmission to make sure we had enough room to drop it. Um, and the one thing that I like about doing the 400 now is because you'll have a shorter tail shaft. So that gives you just a little bit more room when we go to put the, uh, um, God, not the, not the firewall, uh, the uh, transmission tunnel in to get that so all put in. Here's kind of an odd question that I just mm -hmm. kind of thought of. The, does the starter bolt to the block? Or like, how how does that work? Is it in the same position as a coyote? So are you using like coyote flex plates with the adapters and stuff like yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, it's uh, yeah, you use a coyote flywheel. Um, Godzilla flywheel, they're basically the same thing. The same flange on the back. So, um, starter does bolt to the block. So, 
Yeah, you definitely went a little like I don't want to say overboard, but you definitely put in some work here on this floor. Like you definitely. Yeah, we uh, like I said, it was like one night we knocked all the all the floor stuff out. Um, it was it was a really tough decision deciding how we wanted to do it because I was really focused on. I, I'd want to say I was really focused because I knew in the back of my mind it wasn't going to be possible. <clears throat> but with the whole cage being mild steel, I really wanted to keep you know weight low on everything else. Right. Because I know I just put all the heaviest stuff in and now I want to try to put the lightest stuff in. But then it was just like, you know what? I got to get it done. This is what we're going to do. So gotcha. um, and if you go back really quick, um, yeah. those those little uh, strips that you see uh, that are yeah. kind of different. I got those uh, from Tim McAmis race cars. Uh, those are floor stiffener strips. Oh. So I bought those. Um, you get uh, what was it like four? No, no, no. I bought them separate. So they, they come in like four foot strips and they're only like, I think like 17 or 20 bucks. They're not that much. Right. Uh, but what? Standing out of the floor. Yeah. Yeah. So the plan is to drill holes through those holes and drill into the um, floor and then I'll rivet those together. So that way they're together. Um, Tim McGamus recommends that you use uh, bolts um, and nuts, but it's just going to get rivets. I'm not too worried about it. Oh, dude, I'm, I'm all about, uh, about, uh, what are they called? The, 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 the threads that you can press. Um, oh, nuts hurts. Nuts hurts. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, I'm all, yep. Those things are awesome. I got to get one of those kits for this thing. Cause yeah, dude, nuts hurts are, are awesome. Yeah. When yeah. you don't put your back on, that'll really help. Right. Um, all right, so yeah, just mounting up the seat, more cardboard, getting them floors made. Yeah, yeah. It was funny. I posted on a fabrication forum. I'm like, where can I find? Because I got a bunch of this from the school, and I was like, man, yeah. where, can, where can I find? Now that I'm not there anymore, I'm like, man, where can I find this? I have no idea where to find it. Um, I went to Hobby Lobby, and they they didn't have the same exact thing. They had stuff that was a little bit thicker, but it was like the yeah. the backer to uh, uh, picture boards. Oh, yeah. 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 So... Okay, so we, we got floorage, we got a seat mocked up. Yeah, my famous uh, so my sticker it, roof sticker wall. Are you going to uh, like what are you doing for a dash? Are you going to put a stock dash back in it so it's an S10, or are you going to do something custom? You know, I have fought the idea. I I really I don't want I want the I think it's feather like composites makes a uh I've seen that. yeah I yeah they make that. the fiberglass first gen s10 dashboard and i want it so bad um yeah. but i can't justify spending 450 dollars on yeah, that's, that's 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 dashboard that's that's so i might just i might just build uh on my steering column i might just build like a uh um like a dash to put like my iq3 or whatever right. digital display i plan on using so what engine, like not like we kind of went over it earlier, but what engine management are you using on this? Um, so <laughs> I haven't decided yet. Um, there's a bunch of different options available. So like you have the OBR system. Um, so what, which it, what is the OBR? Cause I've never heard of that. Like that's so, uh, oh, so it's uh, founded by a guy named Oli. So Oli, and I, I always mess up his last name, but it's Braul or so, something along those lines. Uh, uh, he's from um, not Germany, Denmark, somewhere around there, somewhere around Europe. Um, and he, he'd kick my butt right now because because I don't remember where he's from. Uh, know, right? but, this is his chance. It's supposed to be supposed yeah, to be throwing, throwing it out. throwing it out. Yeah, but uh, yeah. Oh, but uh, Oli Barul Racing is basically his setup. So. Um, he's, he makes, um, ECUs for like coyotes and Godzilla's and a couple of other different stuff too. Um, right. but that's what we run like on the, we break in and we run pretty much all our engines on dyno with his system. So, okay. Why not a dominator? Why not a Holly? So they don't have anything yet for us. Um, we had, uh, coyote stuff. They have coyote stuff. Um, so what Mass Motorsports did, which is um, a company out of Texas, yeah. they had modified the uh, factory Godzilla, or excuse me, not factory. They modified the um, LS Dominator kit to um, adapt it to the Godzilla setup. So okay. you can run a Godzilla, but the they put parts on it to basically fake it out, thinking that it's an LS engine. 
Ah, gotcha. So it's yeah. just basically they're just using different sensors in the factory to get it to work. Okay. Yeah, basically. Fair yeah, enough. they fake it out, different um, firing order, stuff like that. So, Fair but I haven't decided what I plan on using yet. So um, they gotcha. have like they have like the Hall Tech. They have the Hot. Yeah. I want to do a Hall Tech. Um, it's pretty expensive, but it's well worth the money. Um, so I I don't know. I'll get there when I get. That's like the last of my worry. Like it is. It is. Yeah. Like right, transmission. So Go ahead. Uh, rear rear drive shaft loop, right? Yeah. Drive shaft loops in this thing. I do. Yes, I have three. So I have the two up front, which are removable, so I can pull out right. pins in there, so I can pull that out. And then this is obviously uh, stuck in there for good. So. See, Dean is a well. He just has so much information. Like he just knows so much. So he says it's based in the U.S. Yeah. Owner yep. Danish. Yep. Okay. Yep. Danish. Yep. Like the, the Dean's on point. He, he he'll correct us. Man, we'll get getting all point. the information. I like it. Yep. All right. All right. So yeah. So it seems like you're you're getting her done. Yeah. Um, oh, and hey, that's it. That's all the pictures you sent me. We we I'm out of pictures. Roll so, through all of them. So that's pretty much where the truck's at, right? So uh, what do you got to finish? What's your give me like? I hate to say give me like a, a, a time frame, right? Because like <laughs> this shit take, it takes forever, and I know I, I, I it happens to me like right. Uh, my projects are years behind at this point. So yeah. Well, what, what do you think next year, this year, or well, next year, the year after, what are you thinking? So I always have like, I always tell myself next summer, next summer, next summer, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and next summer comes and then it's not done. But realistically, like the, the hard, I don't want to say the hard stuff is done. The chassis is done. The frame right. is done. The roll cage is done. The motor's done. Um, now it's time to do all the tedious stuff. So fuel system, brake lines, yep. brake yep. system, all that kind of stuff is, is now online. So, um, depending on when I get this customer car done, which should be pretty soon. Um, we're just finishing up a twin turbo kit on it right now. Um, once that's out, um, I have another car lined up, but I can work on that out of the garage. I don't have to work on it in it, but the truck will come back in. I just got to do like the, the, you know, the tin work and stuff on the inside. Um, I got to put the, um, you know, get the brake pedal all set up. I got to figure out brake system and do all that kind of right. stuff. So, so um, I just want to get it, you know, where I could fire it up at the end of the year and maybe take it out to a test and tune just to putz it down the track and right. make sure it goes straight. So and I'm going to say, that's full fair. full race ready by next summer, but um, I know we got some stuff going on right now. We're trying to remodel our house and get some stuff done. So just trying to get everything established. Life stuff comes first, man. Life stuff right. Comes first. So Absolutely. okay. So it's going. It's ten o'clock here for us in normal time zones. Yeah. Um, and I know you probably got to work tomorrow, right? Yes, sir. So, so like I said, it is ten o'clock. So if anybody got any questions, uh, real quick. Yep. That we didn't get to fire them off. Mm -hmm. um, and while you guys are typing or thinking of your questions again, I got to thank, I got to thank you, man, for, for coming on. Uh, oh, no, thank you for having me. This stuff isn't on YouTube really. Like there, there's, there's Godzilla builds here and there. Right. But like mm -hmm. the details aren't out there. So, yeah. And this is a lot of information. So I'm sure everybody's very thankful for it. Uh, I've had new people pop in, just from looking up Godzilla stuff already. So that was really cool. <laughs> Yeah. That was um, no, but thank you very much for having me. I absolutely, uh, I, I appreciate you having me on here. So I, I'm, do you have a channel? Yeah, I know you did. You did. I did. Have I did. Still like, well, what's going on? Like I said, before we started the, uh, before we started this podcast today, I, I was kind of telling you, you know, I want to, I want to start, you know, getting back into making videos and stuff like that. But, I hate hearing myself talk just because yeah. I, I don't know. It's just one of those things. So like, I'll probably end up seeing if I can have somebody, I'm going to give all my footage to somebody and say, here you go, make a good video out of it. You know, right. here's, here's what I want. Here's what I don't want. You know, make it into your own video. Uh, but yeah, if I do it, it'll definitely be like the same thing that's on the caption of this is Jerry trace cars. Uh, that's the company that I've kind of self started, you know, um, my initials jrh and then race cars just kind of fits in hey, there it works and uh so i've been doing a lot of different stuff on the side and i just kind of want to share my experiences with uh 
all you know everybody else i'm a i'm a very open book i i want everybody to know pretty much everything i do i don't really have any secrets to hide um that's why i'm so open with like my build there's a lot of people like why don't you you know not tell anybody or, or keep this a secret I'm like, why would i i don't it's cool right. why would i want to not tell people right. about it so well, once i get off my you know issue of hearing myself talk or you know not wanting to lug a camera around the garage and just get over it and do it then i'll probably yeah. get some that, that's everybody. I don't like hearing myself talk either. And I just yeah. use my phone because I'm too cheap to buy a GoPro. Right, but, right. I... Yeah. <laughs> we must have did a really good job because there's no questions in the chat. So either oh. everybody doesn't care or we did an excellent job. Dean's um, still throwing in some pretty good information <laughs> down below. Dude, dude, like I said, Dean's my number one fan, dude. Like, I, I haven't showed anybody this, but uh, I, we, we, we dicked around and made, oh, we made some hats for tall garage they, oh okay uh, yeah so dean's probably gonna get one of these just because he's so he's so great um but yeah man so I, like i said i want everybody to thank uh jake for coming on um he got to go if uh if you have anything else you want to add man if we didn't get anything on your list now is the time um and again everybody needs to thank thank him for coming on and you're more than welcome to come on whenever you want uh we'll talk about whatever Mm -hmm. um, no, absolutely. No, I'd love to. Um, MF, so you said F this F F <laughs> FOMO co power. Absolutely. Yep, yep. Um, it was funny. So, like, those of you that don't know, like, I was a high school teacher before this, I taught a uh, high school auto shop. Um, uh, so I had a uh, couple of kids that came in and I took this engine, the Godzilla, and I threw it in the truck. And uh, they didn't know what they were looking at. They're like, what is this? And I just joked around with them because I, I originally I didn't tell anybody that I was doing the swap. It took me about six months before I told people that I was doing it. Yeah. And uh, on the block, you see a bunch of FOMO Co stuff on there. And I was like, oh, my gosh, these kids are going to see what it is. They're going to tell their friends and then everybody's going to know. And I was paranoid for no reason. So I took some black RTV and put it over the FOMO Co parts all over the block. And I just told them it was a big block Chevy and they believed it. So. <laughs> <laughs> but um no so yeah it's uh no it's fomo co-powered and uh, i'm pretty proud that it is um you know I, my family comes from a big ford background and my wife's family comes from a big ford background which i'm sure she's probably hearing this because she's sitting on the living room but hey, man, um you're definitely mixing it up because usually it's the other way around usually we're stuffing ls's and fox bodies not no not yeah it's an s10s you know well, she had a, I bought her a Fox body and uh, I was going to put a small block Chevy in it because I had everything to do it. And she's like, right. you are not putting a Chevy in my Ford. And I was like, all right, 302 it. Here it comes. So got a 302 for it. So Dude, I, I, I'd i much rather have a Fox body with a, with a Godzilla than an LS at this point. You know, they're they're it. common. I mean, they're becoming more common now. People are, I mean, uh, Team Z makes a K member for it. Uh, I think there's another company out there that does too. But yeah, you're you're slowly, that's what I love about this platform, man, is like everybody's starting to slowly put their eggs in this basket. And it's just, it's just blossomed into this big, uh, you know, big extra pot that is, you know, going out for everybody, for, for the coyotes, even their own kin, you know, coyotes, um, and then you got the LS engines and then you got the Gen 3 Hemis. You know, they're just out there for fire now. I, I can't wait to see what more this thing has in it. So. Well, all right, man. I'll let you go. Um, so like I said, we did a great job. There's, there's no real questions. Everybody, uh, you know, uh, say bye. And I'll catch <laughs> you. Like I said, you're more than welcome to come on whenever you want. Um, and we'll talk about whatever. And, no, thank uh, yeah, you. I've had a lot of fun uh, learning about these because like, I didn't know anything about them either. So. No, absolutely. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, some information I learned from you that I didn't even know about. So, no, I always enjoy talking to guys, uh, you know, figure out and learn more stuff because that's the name of the game, right? You're always there to learn more. You're never, you never know everything. And if you know everything, you're lying to yourself, you know. That's right. That's so, right. but no, thank you guys very much for all the uh, questions and all the um <laughs> Very nice uh, comments. I really appreciate it. I'm surprised uh, surprised that there was as many people, you know, going for it as what I was anticipating. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, there's, like, there's a good turnout tonight. I, I was impressed. Like, mm -hmm. there's a lot of people that aren't even commenting, too, watching. So, like, good stuff. 
Well, that's good. So, well, thank you very much, Ken. I really appreciate you having me on here, buddy. Anytime, brother. All right. You guys have a wonderful night. Well, everybody, um, I guess that's the end of the live. Uh, I don't think, I do not think that Levi is here anymore. And I do not think that the doc is here anymore. And I just disconnected. <laughs> but yeah, I will definitely keep uh, you guys updated on his project. I'm going to talk to him and get him to get his channel back up and going so we can see progress on the channel. Uh, I'll have to bother him for a while. Um, but yes, Jake, he is awesome. Uh, he's a real cool guy. Uh, I'm happy that, you know, in my adventures in buying junk stuff that i ran into him and seen how cool his project uh, was i too blame the squirrels they are always putting their nuts where they don't belong <laughs> but yeah like i said that was a great lots of good information so i think this was a good live guys um and like i hate to dip out when i have 10 viewers here you know but this live is its own dedicated thing it was about that engine um, so yeah, so, uh, Richie, uh, thanks for stopping in, dude. Uh, I, this is the first time I've seen you in one of my lives. So I hope to see you again, brother. Um, but yeah, I'm going to end it here, fellas. Y'all have a great rest of the week. Uh, y'all have a good holiday. If I don't talk to you, you know, cause the holidays are coming up. So y'all have a good Christmas and whatnot. And, um, I hope to do more tech talks. Uh, so I'm going to keep an eye out for people. Uh, to do more of these that are like more in-depth talks instead of just my normal rambling about you know whatever which i'm doing right now so we're going to end this so everybody love you i'll talk to y'all later